everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you've had a great week. If you're new here, my name is Lynn Hayes and every week I post a video about the astrological influences for the week and how you can get the most out of them. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing I'd like to talk about is the planet Saturn. This summer we have had a large number of planets traveling retrograde. Now, planets don't actually travel retrograde, but sometimes they appear to travel backwards, and we call that retrograde. And this summer, we have had between five and seven planets retrograde, which is a very large number. And when we have that many planets retrograde, there's a tendency for the energies to kind of stall. We're having to keep going back and look backwards behind us. You know, what did we do? Why did we do it that way? We're having to reassess and reformulate a lot of our ideas about what our lives are all about. When a planet appears to change direction from our perspective on Earth, it's at a standstill in the sky as it prepares to make that change of direction. And while it appears to be at a standstill in the sky, it's beaming a laser of that planet's energy towards us. In the last couple of weeks, we've had Mars turning retrograde, we've had Jupiter turning direct, which means forward again. And on the 29th, Saturn will turn direct. Saturn has been retrograde since the spring. Saturn really has barely moved for the last month. It's been at a standstill and the energy of Saturn can be heavy. Saturn is all about achievement and success and hard work and discipline, all of the things that we need to do in order to master the material world. These are the things that Saturn teaches. It has to do with planning and structuring and building something lasting. So a Saturn shining this laser beam on us, we might have felt that we were kind of stuck. Saturn is known to bring delays and disappointments. And the reason for that, and the reason for that in my view, is that Saturn has something that he wants to teach us. And it has to do with these qualities of hard work and discipline and perseverance. And if we're not following those attributes at that time, we will, under a Saturn influence, feel blocked. We'll, we'll have that experience of feeling like we have to go back and redo something, that we have to work a little bit harder in order to be successful at the thing that we are trying to accomplish. So now with Saturn at this stationary point, it is probably one of the strongest influences in the sky right now. That's going to continue for another month or so. But really, Mars and Jupiter and Saturn, they all have just changed direction. Neither of them is moving very much. What that means for us is that uh, this large number of retrogrades is beginning to diminish. These planets that are at a standstill are still holding our feet to the fire. It's a very good time for planning, but it might not be the easiest time to get something new off the ground. As the retrograde energies continue to shift and we move into the fall, by November, all of this is going to have eased quite a bit. But for now, we're dealing with Saturn. Saturn sits on my sun in my natal chart, so I've become very familiar with Saturn and how he works. Saturn is not an easy teacher. I like to think of Saturn as a mentor. So if you're, and this is what I often tell my clients, if you want to learn a skill, let's say you want to learn how to play violin, you're not going to necessarily want to pay a teacher to tell you that you're just fabulous. That's what Jupiter does. Jupiter's like, oh, you're so wonderful. You know, Jupiter brings us confidence and a general feeling of optimism. But Saturn, not so much. Saturn's role is really to be that mentor. The mentor who tells us, this isn't good enough. You need to go back. You need to practice more. You need to work harder. So a lot of us have that voice in our own heads that's quite loud and we don't really need any more energies telling us that we're not good enough, but that's actually Saturn's job. So ideally what we do with that voice is we take it to heart, we do work a little bit harder, and then we enjoy the success that that brings us. I deal with this all the time. I'm an aspiring musician. I love music and I'm not a good practicer. And I resist and resist and practice is really Saturn's domain. Saturn says if you practice every day, you will improve, but I don't like it. However, when I do practice and I see that I do improve, it's very exciting. 
And it feels much better than not practicing, even though not practicing is easier. That's kind of a long explanation of what Saturn has to offer us right now. And we can take that to heart in our own lives. If there's any area where maybe you need to, you know, work a little harder, build more structure in a certain area, and maybe rethink something so that it's more practical, this is a very good time to do that. On the 22nd of September, the sun is going to move into Libra. That's actually the autumn equinox. In tropical astrology, we line up the cardinal points, Aries, Libra, Cancer, and Capricorn with the solstice and equinox points. These are very important astrological positions when the sun enters any of those signs. These points mark the change of seasons and help to shift the energy from one season to the next. When the sun enters Libra on the 22nd, it's more than just a change of signs it's actually a shift into the next season. The other big news that I wanna talk about is the fact that Mercury, which has been traveling through Libra, is about to interact with the Capricorn stellium and Mars. If you're new here and if this is unfamiliar to you, there are three planets that are currently traveling together in Capricorn, and that's Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn. So the Saturn-Pluto conjunction tends to create a fair amount of fear, and we've certainly seen that. It can also bring challenging situations that create destruction, which is Pluto, hardship, which is Saturn. Those two guys together can be really rough, and we're certainly seeing that. And now we have Mars, which just turned retrograde, so it's stationary in the sky, challenging the Capricorn planets, and this is part of what we're seeing with all of these wildfires up and down the west coast. I have a theory that the planet is not very happy with us right now, and it certainly seems to be bringing a lot of difficult situations in order to create change in the way that humans live their life and live on the planet. The presence of Jupiter there is expansive. I was reading recently that Jupiter's motto is yes and more. <laughs> So Jupiter, you know, we like to think of Jupiter as being very positive and harmonious and bringing good fortune, but it also expands whatever it comes into contact with. So if there's a lot of oppression under Saturn and Pluto, which we're seeing now, then Jupiter says, yeah, let's have even more oppression. These three guys are going to be traveling together for the next couple of months. And then once we get into October, November, it does ease up a little bit. But this particular week, Mercury also gets into the action. Mercury is an interesting planet. In Greek mythology, he was called Hermes, but he was the only planet that could travel from Mount Olympus into the underworld. He is often the translator in astrology of the bigger planetary cycles. So when we have Mercury moving into the action, like we do this week, squaring the Capricorn planets and a opposing Mars, it can be very dicey. This is a time when we're going to maybe want to watch our words. There can be a lot of inflammatory rhetoric. You want to be very careful about not starting another fire inside your own home or your own family or your workplace because there's going to be a lot of flame throwing, I would say, this week. As the week begins on September 21st, the moon is in Scorpio. When the moon is in Scorpio, it brings us really deep inside of our own soul. Scorpio is not a place of superficiality. When we're under the influence of Scorpio, we crave a deeper experience. We crave more intimacy in our relationships. We crave more truth. We're not satisfied with superficial explanations that don't make any sense. We want to know why something is happening and what's going on underneath the surface. At about 3.30 p.m. on Monday the 21st, the moon is going to move into Sagittarius. That's a very big shift from the intensity and somewhat dark nature of Scorpio to all of a sudden be under the influence of Sagittarius, which is much more buoyant. It's much more adventurous. It has a longer range view. Earlier, I was talking about how Mercury was going to interact with the Capricorn planets. On Monday, it makes a challenging square to Pluto. 
Mercury is in Libra, where it craves balance and harmony and equanimity. It wants to be nice to other people. It wants all of our communication to be pleasant and to be harmonious. When Mercury forms a challenging square to Pluto, Pluto, the modern ruler of Scorpio, shares a lot of that craving for intensity and that demand for absolute truth. When we're dealing with Pluto, especially in a challenging square to Mercury, the planet of the mind, our thoughts and our intentions, everything becomes much more intense, much more important. So conversations are going to take on this added intensity as we struggle to get down to the truth. That can be uncomfortable because Mercury is in Libra and let's not forget Mars. So it's a little bit of a volatile day. Now on the positive side, it's a wonderful time for problem solving. And that actually feeds the need of Mercury and Libra to find that balance in equanimity. Because if there is some disharmony, especially in our relationships or any of our conversations, our interactions, we know about it. And Libra craves that balance. So the square to Pluto can help us to go deeper, to find these answers that are going to help us to solve these problems. On Tuesday, Mercury, still in Libra, will make a trine to the North Node. On Tuesday, September 22nd, and these times are for the Eastern time zone, please adjust for your own locality. Mercury is going to make a harmonious aspect to the North Node of the Moon. The North Node of the Moon describes our future evolution and Mercury being our thoughts and the way we communicate with others. This provides an opportunity for us to think a little more deeply about the future. We're likely going to automatically be drawn into a new vision or a way to see how our future is going to unfold in a different way. The North Node is like a siren call that says, don't go that way, go this way. And Mercury, of course, having to do with the mind. So with Mercury, the planet of the mind and the way we think about things, communication, harmonizing with the North Node, there's an opportunity to think about the future in a whole new way. And this isn't something we're going to have to really look for, it's just going to happen. The North Node doesn't really require attention, but it's useful if we are aware of North Node aspects because then when we hear this call, we'll be able to recognize it. Also that day on Tuesday, the Sagittarius moon will form a trine to Chiron. That's a harmonious aspect. The Sagittarius moon is very optimistic, very adventurous, and it forms a harmonious aspect with Chiron, the planet of healing. This is a, again, you know, this is a wonderful day with a lot of beautiful energies to help us to move through any stuck energies or any difficult emotions to just release them and be able to move forward. After the Sagittarius moon makes a trine to Chiron with all this healing energy, it will then make a trine to Venus. And when the moon is in a trine to Venus, that's just a wonderful feeling, especially in Sagittarius, which is so bountiful. That's a beautiful day of optimism, good feelings, friendliness, social activity, and most importantly, really honoring our wishes and our dreams. On Wednesday the 23rd, I have some good news and I have some bad news. Let's start with the good news first. The Sagittarius moon will form a harmonious trine to Mars. The Sagittarius moon, as we've said, is very adventurous and very positive and optimistic. And Mars is all energy, it's all drive. It's in its own sign of Aries where it's strong, it's powerful. And when the moon harmonizes with Mars, there's some wonderful, good energy, lots of positive motivation. Really, it's an opportunity to reach for our ideals and take some strong action. Now, the not so good news is that Mercury in the sky, which just passed that square to Pluto, is now square to Saturn. Saturn can be restrictive and it really requires that we work hard and that we achieve something. It's not really about fun with Saturn. So when Mercury is in a challenging aspect to Saturn, 
we might feel somewhat depressed or somewhat like things are futile, like we keep trying to push that rock up the hill and it keeps coming back down. Mercury aspects last only a day or so and the lunar aspects even less. So these are pretty fast moving planets, but the overarching influence here is really Saturn stationary in the sky, not moving, shining this laser beam of you need to be practical, you need to put this stuff together in an organized way and have a goal and a plan. And then at the same time, we have Mars, which is an Aries, which wants no plan, which wants no discipline, which just wants what it wants. These are the energies that we're really dealing with right now. The lunar aspects can help to soften the harder influences in the sky. And then on Thursday, Mercury, which is still an aspect to Saturn, is then going to oppose Mars. When Mercury opposes Mars, I've already talked about how Mars wants what it wants and wants to take action and doesn't really want to be careful or cautious and how Mars is in a challenging square to Saturn right now. And then Mercury, the translator, comes really for the first few days of the week. Mercury comes and translates that square. Mercury hit Pluto and then it hit Saturn and now it's opposite Mars. So it's really setting off this conflict between what we have to do, which is the Capricorn planets, especially Saturn, and what we want to do, which is Mars and Aries. So we just kind of have to hold on whenever there's this kind of conflict, it demands a resolution, it demands an integration. We have to do what we want to do. We have to have opportunities to blow off that steam, to express our needs, to express our desires, to do things that are fun, that will give us enjoyment. But we also have to do the things that we have to do. And many of us feel confined and restricted. We can't travel. Some of us aren't leaving our house very often. The restriction of Capricorn is felt pretty strongly right now and Mars is challenging it. Really, one of the themes of this week is that the restriction of Capricorn is very strong. Mercury is strengthening it by translating its message to Mars, and then over the next few weeks, Mars itself will be challenging the Capricorn planets. The theme is to find this balance between what we have to do, what we need to do, and still honor Mars and still honor that desire, our need to take action, our need to follow our own path, our independence, our autonomy. These things really need to be integrated right now. Also, late on Wednesday on the East Coast at around 9.23 p.m., the moon is going to move from Sagittarius into Capricorn. That's going to create a shift in the energies from the expansion of Sagittarius to the discipline and the structure of Capricorn. This inner drive of Mars activating our needs, what we feel like we need to do and what we want to do, is in a challenging aspect to the Capricorn planets and they have to be integrated. We have to find room to be able to achieve our goals and do the things that we want and have a sense that we have some kind of control, some kind of independence under Mars. And yet Capricorn is giving us a very strong message that there are things that we have to do that we can control and that we're restricted. We're sort of locked down until those things can happen. This is going to intensify just a little bit more when the moon in Capricorn interacts with the three planets in Capricorn, which we call the Capricorn stellium. A stellium is a grouping of planets. So the Capricorn moon is going to be moving into the later degrees of Capricorn. It's going to trigger all those Capricorn planets and really bring a sense of sort of grounding into the earth. That's gonna be great for some people, some people who are earthy, who really like that, who find it a great time to be able to get things done and, and work hard and achieve something. But for people that really need a lot of freedom, who are maybe more emotional, that could be a little bit difficult. But again, the lunar aspects only last for a few hours. It's just going to be temporary. And then Friday the 26th at about 2.08 p.m., the moon's going to move into Aquarius. It's going to leave Capricorn. We're all going to breathe a sigh of relief. We still have Mercury triggering all those planets. There still is a lot of interaction in the sky. But Aquarius gives us some perspective. Under the influence of Aquarius, 
we're able to kind of rise above. It's like we're flying like an eagle and looking down and really seeing the big picture and then possibly be able to kind of revision our life in new and exciting ways. And also to be able to embrace the changes which are likely to come. Aquarius loves change. Aquarius needs change. Unlike Capricorn, which loves a lot of structure and discipline and hard work, and let's just get our nose to the grindstone. Aquarius, on the other hand, seeks invention and new things and new experiences. Enjoy that while you can, because on Saturday the 27th, Mercury, the planet of the mind, is going to move into Scorpio. When Mercury is in Scorpio, we have a fascination with the dark side. We're interested in mysteries. We want to know what's really going on. A lot of people that have Mercury and Scorpio in their charts are psychologists or astrologers, you know, seeking the meaning of things. What's really going on when people do this or that? It is going to leave that challenging aspect to the Capricorn planets, which is going to be a relief, but it's also going to turn our attention to some of the deeper things. We may find that we want to do more research. We may find that we really want to talk about things that matter and that we're less interested in the superficial. Mercury is going to be in Scorpio for a long time because it's going to retrograde in Scorpio. It's going to actually change direction on October 13th and it's not going to leave Scorpio until December. So this depth of processing the intellect is going to be with us for quite some time. I think that's going to be helpful. There's so much going on right now in the skies and in the world, and we need to have a way to try to make sense of it. With Mercury and Scorpio influencing us to go deeper, to look for the meaning, to look under the surface, to really find the truth with the big T, all of this can make more sense. It can give us more intellectual power. So we're going to have a good three months two and a half months of Mercury and Scorpio. I'm going to leave you with that thought. Thanks so much for joining me. Please leave me some comments. Tell me what you think of the videos, what you'd like to see. I've really enjoyed talking to you and I'll look forward to seeing you next week.